All right, on this episode of the Garlic Marketing Show, we're going to talk about the number one lead source for this digital agency, Chris from On The Math. Chris, say hi. Hey, Ian. Pleasure to be here. We're going to talk about the best keywords for their digital agency, their three-pronged growth strategy for their agency, and of course, AI. We're going to get into the human touch, the trickle-down theory, Google, how Google looks at AI right now and SEO. We're talking about the untouched gold mine for most law firms and SEO, where 60 to 70% of SEO leads are coming for, from right now for law firms and how long SEO should take for a law firm. All this on the Garlic Marketing Show, but of course, this is brought to you by videocasestory.com. One of the best ways to grow your business is through customer stories, video case stories. Go check out our new book. You can go to testimonialbook.com. We give you the exact step-by-step process for growing your sales, marketing, and your operations using video case stories. All right, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit first about just who you guys are and your background. Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, pleasure being on your show. Always great to be part of networks that try and educate people and inspire and share stories of what's working, what's not. I'm a big fan of podcasts myself. So it's a lot of fun to get get involved, not just by listening, but also contributing. Little story about myself and on the map. I joined the company as website project manager. Company was started already 11 years ago by a guy, Rick Hoskins, and he's a entrepreneur problem solver. And he's always installed this idea in my mind and people who work with him that the way you grow business is by solving problems. And that's how I got started eight years ago. First was given responsibility over web development department, brought in a CTO, we built out a whole web development team. And then after web development, started focusing on SEO. And through this process, just kept learning things. And Rick would give me the necessary resources to to solve any business challenges that were happening. And one of those was going into SEO and building an enterprise level SEO product. We started with a couple of tests. We started rolling out content silos, which means basically not just having your service page, but understanding what deeper level pages you need to build informational. And these tests were working and things started escalating. Rick and I, we launched the enterprise SEO product. Then I built out also our content department, link building department. And (laughs) basically our agency grew from about 3 million a year to now we're in a range of six and just we'll continue scaling because of things that are working and hardworking teams. And yeah, that was a bit of a tangent, but I gave you a nice no, <laughs> little milestone summary. Yeah, no, that's great. And that's a massive growth from three to six million in a few years. Even just getting the three million as an agency is tough. I mean, congrats on that. That's amazing. What recently, what, how, what's been your main media acquisition sources? What types of marketing are you doing to have that type of growth? Yeah, we are diversified in our acquisition channels. Number one, biggest lead sources are our own SEO. <laughs> so years ago, we recognized that we need to start investing in our own SEO. So if you're trying to generate leads, let's say in law firm vertical, we have launched probably over 60 pieces of content that talk about law firm marketing, starting from law firm marketing guides to leads for attorneys to best legal podcasts. And you'd be surprised. We have a page on best lawyer commercials and that page generates leads as well. Now that's only one vertical. Google is an interesting thing for agency. You can generate infinite amount of leads if you can service different verticals. So we've done the same in home services vertical. We've done the same in health vertical. (laughs) Only issue we run into is limited resources because at that point, like you really need to invest in new content and link building within each of the verticals. Uh, And the one we've been investing the most is the legal one. Then our second biggest lead generation source is our own network. It could be client referrals, our own people just knowing that we do good work. They reach out to us naturally. So that (laughs) the network effect is massive. And then third is outbound and conferences. So we have a sales team that constantly seeks out bigger law firms. In particular, we're doing most of our outbound outreach in, in, law, in law vertical, also a little bit in HVAC now as well. But we try to identify law firms that are spending a lot of money in advertising, but they see very little SEO success. 
So we want to initiate that conversation through educating them, explaining different aspects of what's not working for them SEO wise and how we could turn that around for them because we already see that they're spending money in other channels. So why not take that money and reinvest it a little bit in your own equity? And conferences. So that's something we started this year and we're just a fun group. So it's awesome to go to conferences, connect with others and share some of our stories and in a process, evaluate their marketing. And, and yeah, it's those three has been working and we're just going to continue pushing that. I think there's a lot more we can see result wise as we increase our resources allocated in marketing. And how are you using AI now for your own SEO? <laughs> I knew that question was going to come up. <laughs> we are using it as a support tool, not taking it as, hey, we don't need content writers. Let's just do everything with chat GPT or any other AI content writing tools, because that would be quite risky. We are rolling out different types of tests. So one thing that it's really helpful is to speed up the content production. So you can really scale out your content production a lot by generating some of the content, let's say just an outline and a couple sentences within the outline already. That's already half of the piece. So then you give it to a really advanced level writer, then you'll a lot of the legwork is already done for them. The writer's block with chat GPT or any of the AI content writing tools, you don't really get a writer's block because... It just gives you so many ideas. So that speeds things up. And then the other element, how you can do it is also by tying in editor. So if you want to actually take this and generate a lot more, let's say you just want to scale out hundred pages of content. If you have a good editor, you can launch those pages, but have an editor actually go through it and factually review it and just add a little human touch. Now, the risky part here is, and I've read a lot of case studies and I'm pretty active on Twitter and LinkedIn. People talk about this all the time. There's a lot of cases where people have launched sites and they actually do it. I'm, now I'm going a little tangent, but I think it's worth sharing this. So you can buy expired domains. Expired domain means someone owned a domain. I was actually looking at these this weekend. And one that got bought was called sweetrituals.com. So that was an ice cream shop in Austin. Now the ice cream shop shut down, but they had really valuable authority because the ice cream shop was pretty popular. So they have links from Eater, some local newspapers. So the, the domain itself is authoritative. So <laughs> SEOs like myself or others, they would take that domain name, come up with a content plan. Like you still need a content plan. And let's say we're going to launch a dessert recipe website. So now you come up with 150 dessert recipes. You have chat GPT, write these recipes. You publish the website on that domain because it's already authoritative. And then you wait for Google to pick up this content. And if Google connects the dots and likes your domain and the content, you can scale organic traffic pretty quickly. But with these case studies I've been reading, what often happens is like you see a really nice traffic spike and then it starts trickling down. And the reasons are very speculative, speculative, but it could be that Google is recognizing that this is, how did you launch such large amount of content right away? There's pro there are signals and cues how Google can identify is this really human-written content or it's AI-written content. And Google's kind of positioning right now is in the middle. They're saying, if it's helpful for people, you can use AI. So who's to say, is it, are you trying to game the system or are you actually trying to be helpful and create as many dessert recipes as possible using AI content writing? And that there's a lot of other ways you can use it, but that was just one example. So to come full circle in our agency, we're still testing it. It's early phase, but for us, it's a shortcut. It helps speed up the production. It helps writers. And then for SEO team, we can come up with more creative title tags, heading tags, because ChatGPT, just tell it, I have a client, a car accident lawyer in Miami, come up with 15 catchy title tag options. And then you pick one that's really good because click-through rates are a factor. When you see the search results, you want to click on the more interesting one. So right now it's really, I would say, high-level assistant, not really a, a replacement for any specific function, but 
It's definitely interesting. And we're, I'm just excited we can scale things faster. It helps our clients, helps our own internal projects. It does. And it's a super powerful tool. And, but to your point, though, it's like also you got to be careful with it. You got to pay attention. It's not completely automated. It just augments everything it was, right? Be careful with it. <laughs> um, and so you, you mentioned lawyers and um, you all worked with a lot of lawyers, contractors, but you've had recent success with a lawyer and SEO. And I think there's still that hesitancy that people think law firms are going to get the really big cases from SEO, but it, that's it's not happening. It's happening, right? It comes down to your marketing channels. Like you asked me, how are we acquiring customers? I think if the law firm is well-established, they should have several acquisition channels and SEO should just naturally be one. Goldmine that attorneys often are not recognizing is their own Google business profiles, like the little map listings. Mm -hmm. If you're, let's say you don't want to hire a marketer or agency, something you should be doing just within your own time, with your own resources is developing that prof profile because Google serves results based on proximity. So if someone is nearby your office, if you have decent reviews, photos, and all the basic things optimized, you're just naturally going to get picked up. In local SEO, we're seeing 60, 70% of the leads going through those map results because people trust the reviews. They want to see, like, sometimes they don't even go to website. They just call directly from those Google business profiles. And to me, law firms that are not leveraging that is, is just waste of their resources. Like, even if you're, maybe it's not your number one acquisition channel, but that proximity factor is still going to bring in leads for you. So it's, it's massively important that the reviews are there. As many reviews as you can, just pump that profile up so it looks really valuable. And that channel will drive leads for you. Now, if you want to scale that up, then you go into a website and then you have to look at it as almost like your stock investments. <laughs> it's not going to be overnight wins unless your website is already authoritative and you need to optimize your technical SEO errors, which means more of you have a good car, but you have two flat tires. You're not going to get too far. That's equivalent of technical SEO giving you a huge boost, but most likely your site authority is okay. And then you need to develop really, I would say holistic plan. Understand what is what keywords you're going after and what activities are going to be applied to your website and Google business profile in the next six months. Are you building really deep content plan to build authority around the keyword, whichever it is, let's say personal injury lawyer or family lawyer? Are you building a deep content bank of quality content that will give Google the signals that you're the authority on that respective topic within the respective location? And then the other side to this is building backlinks, which builds your website domain authority. And you should see a holistic plan for let's say for six months in that same, in the same type of range, okay, you're building out a deep content bank, and then you know you're acquiring quality backlinks, which is like a citation. If you think about research papers, at the end, there's a bunch of citations. Where did you pull this information from? That's literally what backlinks are. They're just citing your website and saying, hey, this piece of information came from here, or Ian Garlic is an attorney from here and here, and you get a backlink from directories where only attorneys can appear, which yep. tells Google, oh yeah, these are real attorneys. So there should, I would really encourage people to look at it in like almost six month segments saying, hey, do I have a holistic plan? Is that plan being executed? And if you really see that plan, you're gonna see incremental results. And then you get bought into that game where you see yourself going from ranking in position 50 to position 11, Things are starting to work and you get to start seeing leads trickling in. And then it becomes a time factor. You mentioned the successful case study we had. One of our attorneys, attorney clients recently landed a really big case for a bus accident case. And they've been a client of us for three years. <laughs> and this is just one of the really big cases that it came in through organic results. But they've worked with us for three years and not just to land this one huge case. Like they get cases all the time. It's just, you figure out your predictable caseload that comes in, that covers your bills, your profitability. And then 
cases like this is just a home run and really big payout for the firm itself. Yeah, it's so true. It's yeah, like you said, like anything, you know, hit singles, singles, and once in a while you, you hit that home run. And I've been saying for years, it's like an invest, it's a piece of land you're investing in. You've got to keep investing in it. You've got to keep improving on it. And the more roads you get in front of it, the, the better it's going to be. And where you said six months, it's how long do you wait before you feel your content strategy? You need to adjust your content strategy completely. Where, mm. oh, this is going, I know you're probably tweaking along the way, but where do you go, you know what? We're going way down the wrong path. Yeah. <laughs> Within six months, you should start seeing movements. It depends what is your benchmark, right? If you're starting from nowhere, I would like to see a site getting some page one rankings for some easier keywords within six month period. So you start seeing some level of leads already coming in. If you are, let's say already page two, page three for some of the high competition keywords when you start the campaign, six months should get you on page one. But getting to page one is not enough. You need to be in the top results. So that's the part too. Once you're in page one, to get those top three results, that's when things get a lot more trickier. You need to focus a lot more on link building, have to get more creative. How can you get in front of press? What unique cases maybe your client has handled? That can help a lot, just highlighting those more in front of journalists or just getting into some other outreach methods. That's where things get a little bit more advanced. But to your point, the six month mark is a good time frame to evaluate if the strategy is working or not. Yeah. Biggest factor that could not work is building the authority fast enough because if you're not recognized law firm and now you're trying to rank, I don't know, in Chicago, Google's just not gonna give you that credibility within six months. So you yeah. just naturally need to build that authority. and. Sometimes it's a painstaking process, but that's just how algorithms work. And I think marketing in general, that's how it works. If you want to break into a competitive market where people have been advertising for five plus years, it's going to take some resources to, to take away their market share. Yep. Oh, for sure. For sure. And yeah, it's an investment, but once you get there, now you've gotten such a big piece of it. You can go the PC route. Hey, how much do you guys do PC? How yeah. much is, what's the most expensive click you're seeing right now? Oh, for some of the personal injury terms, it's around $300. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, and that's a click. And there's that a lot is of- just one click. And that's a lot of click fraud. There's a lot of bots. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of competitors just going click, click. <laughs> yeah. And also Google's learning the PPC performance as well. So let's say you run a campaign for two months and then you stop running it. The optimizations will fall off as well because Google is using their machine learning to serve your ad more relevant to people that are likely to convert. And you think that's not the case with just you know direct clicks based on keywords, but Google's shifting away from that model too, just to take your budgets and optimize it for as many leads as possible, which technically should help us, but <laughs> Google's can be a quite a bit black box <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's funny when people call me up like, can you call Google and ask them about this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, no. 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 This is awesome. Awesome, Chris. And tell us a little bit more about working with you all and how it works and the next steps of working with you. Yeah, absolutely. We always start with discovery just to align the expectations and understand what are the marketing budgets company can afford, what are their expectations? Because sometimes the budget doesn't align with the desire. Hey, you want to rank number one in some metropolitan city for high competition terms. If those align, then we prepare a strategy that's presented of what resource allocation you really need. We really think of SEO as production. How many backlinks you need to publish, how much content you need. What is that gap between you and your top competitor? And then for us, you know, the job is to fill in those gaps. That's why I'm excited about ChatGPT because you can fill in some of those gaps a bit faster. Now it's still in testing mode, but it definitely yeah. helps. And once those expectations are aligned, we go to work. It usually takes the six month mark is a nice 
starting point to understand how much content was published, what the backlinks did, how did the rankings improve. But really, it's an ongoing process. If it's a local client, let's say law firms or home services, then Google Maps become a big factor as well. So then we need to have a review acquisition strategy. We need to apply necessary optimization elements to those Google business profiles. So then we track your website leads and also your Google business profile leads. And for that matter, also rankings. So we look at your Google map rankings. There's something called geo grids. We talked about the proximity factor. So we want to see how well you rank within two mile radius around your office, because I will use Miami as an example. There's a city nearby Fort Lauderdale. So for someone who hasn't visited Florida or Miami that much, you might think it's the same city like Miami and Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> but they're actually like 20 something miles apart, actually might be even more. So to map results, I see if I would type in car accident lawyer in Miami downtown will be completely different than in Fort Lauderdale because Google, again, wants to serve the closest proximity law firms to the searcher's location. So we show our clients how these geo grids, how their rankings are improving across their location. So it's a really interesting process. And we also see a lot more leads coming through these map results. So it's crucial that we invest a lot of our SEO resources just in those map rankings. And then, you know, what goes for organic rankings, same process. We also use our own proprietary developed system that tracks your leads. So we can connect it to your CRM or you can use it as CRM, but we provide full transparency to our clients where they can log in and if leads are not coming in, then <laughs> that's a hard conversation always to have, but then we align our benchmarks and understand, is the campaign not growing fast enough or maybe there's some other aspects. We need to improve the design or get more reviews, a variety of factors that could impact impact that. It's always very transparent conversations with our clients. And really the goal is to become their outsourced marketing managers, because really that's what it is. They work with us, but our account management team gets really deep within the business itself and works with the business owner or operator to deliver maximum results. And that all only happens through building a close relationship and educating each other through through this process, business owners, operators educate us on their business, nuances, unique value points. And then we need that information to know, oh, where the leads converting? Oh, which keywords are working better? Or once things are going well, hey, maybe let's open another location. What do you think about this? Here's keyword research. Those are literally conversations we have with a lot of our clients where we help them scale up their business within new locations because... The map results and the local, once you figure out the local mechanism, local marketing mechanism, it, yeah. it really yields very solid results. It is. It's the Google Maps and my business and all, everything has really changed so much. This is awesome. We'll put a link to on map on the show notes. Chris, where's the best place to follow you on social media? Yeah, I would say LinkedIn or Twitter. On LinkedIn, you can find me by Christophs Brankins. And same on Twitter, my handle is K Brankins. And, and yeah, or check out our website. We, like I mentioned, we invest a lot in our own content. So there's some articles you can definitely read up on if you want to brush up on your marketing knowledge or implement some of the strategies. Fantastic. Chris, we'll put a link to all that in the show notes. Thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. My pleasure, Ann. And thank you all for taking Chris and I on your journey. This has been Ian Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show.